Hey guys and gals, Todd from Lowbrow Customs here again. In this video, we're gonna soup up this 2003 Sportster 883. Uh, we picked this bike up for relatively cheap and we're gonna put a SNS hooligan kit on it. The kit's going to increase the displacement. The kit also comes with a set of cams and some lifters. SNS is claiming this kit will boost this engine up to around 85 horsepower. Might be interesting to maybe do a dyno pull after we get done and see what kind of results we get out of this. All USA made high quality components from our friends over at SNS. We have this part available on the website. It will work for 2000 to 2018 Sportsters. It's available in silver or black. So if you have a silver motor, you get the silver kit. You got a black motor? Hell, if you wanna have black cylinders on your silver motor, you can use the black kit. Before we get started taking the engine, top of the engine apart, we're gonna do the uh, rocker boxes, cylinder heads, cylinders first. One thing worth mentioning is, if you haven't done this job before, good idea. We have this workshop manual available on the website. Get yourself one. There's also factory books available. Generally, the factory books only cover one year. Our book covers all the Sportsters. 86 to 03. 04 would have been rubber mount, so it was a totally different book. Get yourself one of these books. Come in real handy. We also have this nifty wrench. You'll see when we get to the intake manifold how this is very handy to have. Uh, you don't really need a lot of special tools to do this job. There's a couple things like you'll see as we go along here. Uh, ring compressor is kind of important and a torque wrench. Generally, if you don't have a torque wrench, you can borrow one from the auto parts store. But I'm gonna show you that this, uh, this job isn't super hard. You just have to pay attention to detail, uh, cleaning things, gasket surfaces, and it's a pretty straightforward job. So if you have some mechanical abilities, you should be able to handle this job with no problems. Even if you're not super mechanically inclined and you just wanna learn, it's not a hard engine to work on. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing and get it done correctly and it'll work fine. Now you may have noticed in the first, first scene that we have done some pre-disassembly on this motorcycle. Uh, most of the stuff's pretty straightforward. You're gonna be removing the gas tank, the exhaust, the carburetor, and then it gives you a nice clear shot to get to the top of the motor. We're also gonna go ahead and move the coil out of the way because obviously we can't get that front rocker box lit off. And when, when we get to the rear one, you'll see how much fun it is to get the stupid thing out of there. It's kind of a tight fit, but it will come out without removing the engine. All, all these jobs we're doing here today can be done without removing the engine from the frame, which makes life a lot easier. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get this coil moved out of the way here. Already the, the uh, front tank bolt is what holds that. You're just gonna kind of get it out of there any way you can, like so. And I don't really want to disconnect everything. I am gonna disconnect this because it's gonna need to come off anyway. Mm, boy, she's a stuck. Mm. There she goes. And then you can just stick this thing up on the frame like so. Any way you can, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and remove this one. Spark plug wire. Now we have clear access. There's gonna be eight bolts on the rocker boxes, four on the front, four on the rear. We're gonna break those free and then we'll remove them. And for the lid, you don't really need to worry about unloading anything when we get down to the inner the lower rocker box, you'll see that we are going to remove the spark plugs and rotate the engine so that it's not putting pressure on the push rods. And I always like to break these free by hand, and then I'm gonna grab my air ratchet. And you can see that this rear one it's kind of hidden, you can't really get on it. Uh, 
And since my air ratchet's really not gonna get down in there with this one, we'll go ahead and just remove that one all the way. And as we go along here, what I do is I'll set these fasteners on the workbench and then when I get the stuff apart, I'll stick it back in the hole where it belongs. Uh, these are pretty self-explanatory, not a problem. Let's switch over to some air. That'll make things move a little more quickly. Oh, let's go the other way. Quarter inch. Air ratchet, oh. And you may also notice I have this nifty little short Allen, which uh, makes it pretty good too. And under no circumstances are we going to be using a screwdriver to remove to pry in between these gasket surfaces because that's a no good. And there we go, we've got all those loose. We'll go ahead and take them all out. They're all the same, doesn't matter front or rear. If you mix them up, it's not gonna be a big deal. They're all the same. Okay, once we get all those out, I generally break the rocker free, like a so. And that one's real stuck, and so is that. This one will come off all in one lump sum, but this one will not. So we're gonna have to get that broke there. Now this is the one that's kind of a bear. You just kind of got to hold your mouth just right. Why in God's name Harley had to make this frame so freaking tight to this I'll never know. And like I was saying, this rear rocker box is kind of a jigsaw puzzle. Once you get it just right and you're holding your mouth just right, she will come off. It is a pain. So don't be alarmed if you're having a hard time getting that off. Even I have a hard time getting that one off, along with the center. Okay, like I said, I'm putting everything on the bench. All the rear will be here, all the front will be over here. And as you can see, now we're down to the rocker box where we're gonna take some more bolts out. We might as well go ahead and tear these gaskets off of here right now while we can. We will be replacing all the gaskets. We're not reusing any gaskets. Okay, now comes the time where we're gonna go ahead and remove the spark plugs because we're going to be rotating the engine so that there's not a bunch of pressure on the push rods. So I went ahead and loosened the spark plugs. And those look like they were in need of replacement anyway. And I've got a flat jack underneath the engine so I can jack up the back wheel. There we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put it in second gear. If it won't go into gear, you can just easily, you can bump the wheel, that'll make it go into gear. Go ahead and uh, we'll do the rear one first. Keep an eye on those rockers and watch what happens when I rotate it. Okay, that one's starting to come up. See it coming up? Oh, and it just went down, the other one's down. We'll go around one more time, that one came up, now it's down. Now both the rockers are down at their lowest point, so it's okay to go ahead and loosen this. There still will be some pressure on it, but not as much as if one was up and one was down. Uh, once again, we've got two 3 16ths right here. I like to take the little ones out first or at least loosen these. Oh, and there's that lovely smell. Smells like you're at the fish market when you get the top of one of these motors open. It's pretty awesome.
And now that we've broken it free, we should be able to use our ball end on there. So we went ahead and loosened that with the ball end. And we've got the other one. And since these are longer than the top ones, we can go ahead and take those out. We're gonna need a 7 16 socket. We're gonna need two of them. And you're gonna need a deep one for right there. There's three small fasteners. That will need to come out. And these are pretty long. So this is a long-winded operation on these. And I don't really want to put my air ratchet in there because it'll probably get stuck in the middle of the damn frame. The darn frame. And sometimes when you get them loose like that, you can finish turning them out with your fingers. Look at that. That one would have worked for the air ratchet, but since we're already on a roll here, and we'll show you again once we get this rocker box off, all the fasteners. Oh, and that one fell out. Hey, that's all right. Not a big deal. There's no place for it to go. It can't fall in anything that's going to hurt anything. We'll get it with a magnet in a sec here. We will be using the air ratchet on the front one though, because this is taking way too long. Oh my gosh, if I was working flat rate, I'd be broke right now. Nope, still not done. It's getting there. And you can see, I'll show you one of these bolts that has some weird corrosion on them because you have a steel bolt in aluminum. And that makes life a little more difficult here. And there it goes, got that one all the way. Let's grab a magnet and get that one out before we forget about it. There's that funky corrosion I was talking about. Totally normal. Stuff looks like that. Don't be concerned about it. And you can see why I'm breaking these by hand because we probably have a bunch of corrosion on these too. And if I were to use my air tool, it wouldn't break them. I'd still have to do it by hand. And it's pretty obvious, top end's never been off this engine for a uh, gasket leak. This one will give us a little more leverage because it's longer. There she goes, look at her. Well, let's continue like this. By the time we get the air ratchet going, we'll use that on the front one. And we're just about there, gang. There we go, ready to pull it off. I'm gonna take these two bolts out so they don't collide with the frame. And I'm also gonna pull the push rods out now.
because those will kind of be in the way on the rear one. And then she should come out like a so. Bada bang. Okay. Now, like I said, I like to stack up my parts so they all go back in the same place they came off. Generally, we'll clean this stuff up later. Okay, so just to review, we took these two out first. Oh boy, that's really... Took those two out first, then those three smaller ones in the middle, and then the four outer ones. And then she comes off, like a so. Okay, we're gonna move on to the front one. It's gonna be a lot easier because everything's much easier to get to. Once again, we're gonna loosen the two that take a 3 16th first. One on the front and one on the rear. Then we'll go ahead and loosen our 7 16ths. Oh, wait a minute, gang, we forgot to rotate the engine. Not a big deal since we haven't loosened the middle ones yet, but let's rotate her to the correct position. I lowered it back down, gang, because the bike wasn't stable because I only have one tie down. That one's going up. There we go, that's it right there. Since we're done with that job, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in neutral. Okay, all right, so we got our rockers in the right place. We'll switch to marrow ratchet. Try to make things go a little faster here. And that one fell out just like the other one. Huh, imagine that. We are ready to loosen the other ones now. It really doesn't matter what order you do these in. Breaking the torque on them. Hear that? That's not to be alarming. And then if you ratchet them until they feel like they're loose, you can put the air on it. Hey, that's it for that one. She's ready to come off. Uh-oh. Look at that. And that's all there is to that. Get that one. 
And you may also take notice now how the push rods have a colored band on them. Pink and brown. Brown's going to be intake. Pink's going to be exhaust. All right. We are now ready to remove the cylinder heads. Well, you may notice we've got a head stay connected to the frame here, but we have already removed the bolts for it. In order to break the head bolts free, a breaker bar is required. They also make a kind of a weird shape that goes like this, where you put your socket on one end and you, you, you just basically need some leverage. And you're also going to need a 12 point socket for these. And I didn't mention it, but I was using a six point socket on the other ones. Uh, I like to use six point sockets any chance I get because there's less chance of rounding off a fastener. Uh, even though this bike isn't very new, stuff seems to be in pretty good shape. Once again, it's never been apart. And so we'll go ahead and we'll break the four and four head bolts loose and then we'll be able to remove the cylinder heads. Hear that noise? That means she broke free. Hear that? I suppose you could do it without an extension, but it definitely makes a difference. And once they're loose, they come out pretty easy. It's that initial, whoa, Nelly, breaking them free. And we'll go ahead and break the other ones. We'll do all eight of them at once and then just pop them out. Okay, oh, wait a minute, gang. We have neglected to remove our intake manifold. Take a look right here. You can see there's two half inch fasteners. Here and here. And incidentally, you don't really need to remove these completely because you'll see in a second here. And those are pretty easy to remove because you're using a wrench. The other ones, sometimes the corrosion that occurs on these bolts can make it rather difficult to get them out. And this is where the, the tool I showed you comes in handy. A regular Allen wrench is too long to get into those. All right, we went ahead and loosened those with the special tool and then you can use a ball in to uh, get them out the rest of the way. Because these do have to come all the way out and then once I pull the manifold, you'll see. And these surprisingly loosened very easily. Uh, sometimes these can really be a bear. And then you're just gonna Probably would have helped if I loosened the other ones a little more. And she'll come right out just like that. I think this one was kind of mucking it up a little. We are going to be putting new intake manifold seals on here. And now you can see why you didn't have to take the other ones completely off because it's slotted and that one's solid. Allen head goes on that side, the other two are still on the cylinder heads. So we'll put that aside for later. Now we can go ahead and remove all of our head bolts because we've broken them all free. And I just use an extension with a knurling on it.
Or if you want to use the air ratchet, you can do that too. Two more to go, and then we'll have a couple of cylinder heads sitting on the workbench in a second here. That one's a little too tight to do by hand. There it is. There it is. Oh. That one's a little extra corroded. Even though it feels loose, it doesn't want to turn by hand. So, all else fails, use your ratchet. There we go, cylinder heads. And push rod tubes are coming off too. Sometimes they stay in the bottom, sometimes they don't. See one stayed in, one did not. We're not going to we're probably not going to be able to break this free with this silly stay going under the frame, so we'll just go ahead and pop that off. It's going to have one stud and one bolt. Oh, there she goes, look at her go. Yeah, I knew I should have taken that off earlier, but I didn't, so we did now. It's all good. Now we're down to the cylinders, look at that. So far, nothing overly complicated going on here, is there? Well, pistons are in a good place to take the cylinders off. They're both almost all the way up, so that's a good thing. So you're just gonna go ahead and wiggle it off. Probably actually would have been better if it was down. There we go, that's better. I'm just supporting the rod with my other hand so it doesn't want to rotate again like it just did. Come on. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to want to do, we're going to put some of these blue shop towels in that hole. Both those holes. We don't want anything going in there. If one of these stray bolts laying around here goes in there, that could be a problem. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the circlips from the piston pins. There's a little groove here. You just take a screwdriver or a pick and should pop out. There she goes, bada bing. Okay, so then the pin should just slide right out, like so. 
pull it out enough to clear the rod and remove your piston. This one we took out the other side, so we're gonna push it this way. Like that. All right, since the uh, SNS Hooligan kit comes with a new set of cams and lifters, we're gonna go ahead and remove the push rod tube holders. Even if we were just doing a top end, a 12, just a 1200 big bar with no cams, we'd still need to remove these to replace the seals in there. So we'll go ahead and break those free and then you can see what the seals look like that are on the bottom of the push rods. Tubes, push rod tubes. And once again, they are torqued, so I'm using a long ratchet to give me some leverage. And once again, we've got that same old corrosion going on. And now that they're broke free, I think I'll switch to a short ratchet. And then, next is the exciting part. We get to take the cam cover off, woo! All this other stuff is uh, pretty mundane, if you ask me. And those just nothing. Also notice there's a locating dowel on the crankcase where that locates in that hole. And here's your lower pushrod tube seals. That will be replaced. Now we'll just take these off and put them on the bench with the rest of our stuff. Now in order to get the lifters out, I'll just give her a quick, quick wipe down. In order to get the lifters out, you have to take these four fasteners here, and you'll see when we get one out, it's kind of a pin. You'll see. Let's get one out, and then you'll see. Okay, let's get her done. 5.30 seconds. I'll just do one all the way so you can see what's what we're working with here. Ah, look at that. And what that does, you'll see when I pull a lifter, there's a flat on the lifter. So this pin going in the hole is keeping the lifter from spinning around because if the lifter could spin around, the roller that goes against the cam, oh, that'd be a big problem. So I'll go ahead and re remove those other three. Oh, that one was tight. And if we were just doing some repair work and we were going to reuse these lifters, it's always a good idea to mark which one came out of which hole so they go back in the same place for wear patterns. There's our two rear ones. Go ahead and take these two out and then we'll remove our lifters. Okay, now we're gonna grab our magnet. And look at that. Okay, now you can see the flat. See that, see that flat? You can actually see where the pin was contacting it. So when the lifters go back in, you're gonna install them like that. The pin's gonna keep it from rotating because there's our roller that goes up against the cam.
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take this cover off because obviously that's gonna be right in the middle of the road and it's probably easier to pop this off than it is to take that off. So it's only three screws here. In order to take that off, we'd have to pull this silly cotter pin and that pin that's pressed in there and blah, blah, blah. So we'll just take these three out and move this to the side. Okay, now we're gonna remove the ignition module. And uh, even though these have a pretty nifty timing light, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with a Sharpie so I know where it was when it was timed. Just because I can, you see there's a little V-shaped slot there. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line where the V-slot is. Two pillar bolts out, and we're gonna have to find the darn plug for the ignition. And I think we'll spray a little lube -doob in there because we're gonna be pulling it out. And by wiggling the wire down here, I can see this is the pickup. And here is the plug for the pickup on the frame. So we'll go ahead and unplug that from the frame. And we'll Oh, she's a dry one. Okay. Do that to there. Oh, we lost our special clip thingy. There we go. Now we got it unplugged. So when we take this off, this will go with it. And I'm just gonna pull that up a little bit to... Oh, so much for that program. Now, the next thing we're gonna need to take off is this cup that has the two little windows that goes through there and tells it when to spark. And this cup is attached to the end of one of the cams. Imagine that. Oh boy, no more big mysteries going on there, is there? Okay, I think we're ready to pull the cam cover. See, there is the end of the cam, look at her. And you'll also notice, we'll show you this real quick, even though you'll see it again later. That little titty right there corresponds to that little notch, and that's how these two windows will know what's going on for that chinga. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the cam cover now. Woo! And if I remember correctly, most of these bolts are different lengths. So one of the tricks that you can use to keep track of these is you can get a piece of cardboard and draw a picture of the cover and poke some holes in it and stick the darn bolts in the holes. The other way you can figure it out when you have the cover off is to put the bolts in and they should all have the same amount of thread showing. But we'll have a look here. It's been a long time since I took one of these off. There's another trick I used to use to keep track of where the screws go. I had a really long magnet, and what I would do is pick a starting point. Like, since this is the top one, I'd put that one first, then that one, that one, that one, that one, all the way around in a line. So, 
Just be careful when you put it back together that all the bolts are going, the screws are going back in the place where they came out of. Ooh, only two more to go here. All right, I went ahead and uh, figured I'd go ahead and demo this little job here because it just makes life a lot easier. Already I can see those two are different. That one's longer than the other ones. Short one, long one, long one. So. When we're ready to go back together, this will make life a lot easier. And we will also won't lose any of our screws that way. All right, got them all out. Cam cover off, woo! Hmm. Yeah, right. Mm. Oh, mother that thing's stuck. I ain't doing shit. Really? You fing kidding me? You do want to have something underneath there, as you can plainly see, there's a bunch of freaking oil in there. So we've got our cam cover broke free. Somewhat. Oh, there she comes. And just wiggle her on off of there. Oh, we got a breather on there. That's not helping matters very much, is it? And lovely Harley likes to use these stupid pinch clamps that you can't just unthread it and take it off now, can you? Oh, and look, one of our cams came out with the cover. Oh, bummer. Good thing we're changing them, huh? Oh, now the timing's all out of whack. Gosh darn it. All right, let's get this hose off of here. There she goes. I think we got the clamp mangled enough that it'll come off now. There we go. Okay. It really doesn't matter if we show you how the marks line up because we are going to be putting new cams in there and we're gonna show you how those marks line up when you're putting the new cams in. We are going to be putting a new gasket on here. All right, this part's gonna be really hard. Watch. We're gonna remove these old cams. Oh boy, that was tough. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's the last one. Okay. All we gotta do now is clean up this mess because we're gonna be putting a new gasket on there after we put our new cams in. So let's get that done. 